I'd like to talk a little about the gender dimension in the Marie Curie postdoctoral fellowship application. During this presentation, I will share with you some effective strategies to address this requirement and provide you with a handy and free checklist to help you organize your thoughts and ideas about this crucial aspect of your application. So first, let's recap the exact wording of the gender dimension instructions, and let's dissect them sentence by sentence. Here it is, uh, describe how the gender dimension and other diversity aspects are taken into account in the project research and innovation content. When they refer to the project's research and innovation content, I believe that they are referring to the entire research process from its initial development to its ultimate applications and outputs. It's important to note that gender dimension can be incorporated and emphasized within your proposal at any stage of the research process. And this uh, will actually depend on the specific design of your project. Next, uh, if you do not consider such a gender dimension to be relevant in your project, please provide a justification. While it is true that the guidelines state you may provide justification for why gender dimension is not relevant to your project, I still think that uh, your proposal will be received more favorably if you make an effort and try to explore how you can integrate the gender dimension into your project. So then we have, remember that this question relates to the content of the plant research and innovation activities and not to the gender balance in the teams uh, in charge of carrying out the project. So basically what this says is that you shouldn't talk about the gender balance in the team with your supervisors and you as a researcher. And finally, they mention sex, gender, and diversity analysis refers to biological characteristics and social cultural factors, respectively. So they are trying to delineate between the definition of sex and gender, one as biological and the other as sociocultural concepts. And that means that you will have to make sure that you're using these concepts properly in the text of your proposal. To satisfy this criterion, uh, by default, you need to disaggregate the analysis uh, of your project by gender. And this happens at the results analysis stage. Still, the strategy how to approach this requirement in the application will also depend on uh, whether you are going to collect primary data with human participants or work with secondary data with human participants, or if your research has nothing to do with human participants at all. So let's uh, walk through each of these scenarios one by one. In the first case, when you plan to connect primary data with human participants, most of your response to this requirement should probably focus on the stage of data collection and connect it to gender dimension. So some things you could mention in your proposal are um, that you will develop questionnaires and interview items that are gender sensitive, that you will use gender impartial language and design your questions in a way that will allow subsequent analysis by gender. And you actually should come up with specific example for each of those. Uh, you can also mention that you will use quota sampling by gender and perhaps by additional categories such as race or class. You should definitely mention that you will perform analysis uh, on the collected data by gender and that all the outputs and dissemination activities will include information on gender differences. If you're planning to work only with secondary data like surveys, for the gender dimension, most of your focus might go to the data analysis stage. But also you could do some more detailed work here. For instance, you could uh, you can mention that you will be using survey weights uh, in your analysis to correct for gender imbalances in data, or if those survey weights do not exist, propose to create them from the population data and balance them by gender, age, and other demographic categories. You should uh, 
also definitely mentioned that you will do analysis by gender or sex and present uh, projects findings by gender in dissemination activities and its outputs. The most difficulty in answering to the gender dimensions requirement happens if your research does not involve human participants at all, particularly in hard sciences. I've seen successful applications where they simply mentioned that the gender dimension is not relevant to their research, but it also seems that in the Horizon Europe program, the requirement to justify the statement became stricter compared to earlier years uh, of Horizon 2020. I think that uh, one good strategy to do is probably to try to find a way to incorporate the gender dimension in the dissemination and output uh, activities of the project. So instead of saying that gender dimension is not relevant to your research, you could show that you thought of some other ways how you could promote gender equality through your project activities. Here, however, as we talked before, you do not need to mention the gender balance in your research team that is with your supervisors and you. So how else can uh, you tackle gender dimension? One of the things that you could think about is whether there can be applications of your research in quote unquote real life. Uh, if there are, think about whether there could be gender biased outcomes uh, in those applications and how you could mitigate uh, them in your project. You could also think about knowledge transfer activities uh, with your host institution and think about making those activities gender sensitive. Likewise, uh, with outreach and dissemination activities of your project, think about how could you make those uh, dissemination activities appeal to diverse audiences. You could also make sure that your advisory group or advisory board of stakeholders is gender balanced. This is different from your team uh, with your supervisors. If one of the outputs uh, is a product, uh, you can think about gender sensitive design of the said product. If nothing of the above can be applied to your project, you can talk about collaboration with diverse scholars on your papers or reports, uh, and that is to ensure the inclusion of a variety of perspectives to your projects. Or even think about the gender balance at the literature review and citations levels, uh, which um, help actually in fighting bias against female scholars and their contributions in academia. But here I also suggest to add more citations uh, from the research on gender bias in academia so that you could show that you uh, thought about it in more detail. Uh, this is one example from natural language processing research, uh, which I found on Talk Academ Academia Forum. You can stop the video later if you need to read it in detail, but let me just highlight uh, a few good parts in this passage. First, they show familiarity with gender-related issues in their research area by bringing in relevant citations. This is likely to be uh, necessary for your project as well. They also mentioned that their analysis will include an analysis by gender, and this will be at the results analysis stage. And they mentioned that gender dimension will have relevance to applications of the project at the dissemination stage. These three components will be important in your proposal's descriptions of the gender dimension too. It can help to think about the application of the gender dimension across the entire research process, from research idea to research conceptualization to actual research analysis and to dissemination stage. I got this diagram from the Gender in EU, uh, EU funded research toolkit, which breaks down the various stages of the research process and where you could uh, consider different issues related to gender dimension. And it mentioned things like make research hypothesis gender sensitive or report data in a gender sensitive way. I will link the source in the description box. You can check it out in detail later. 
So using all of those ideas, I created my own gender dimension checklist specific for MSCA postdoctoral fellowship applications. With this checklist, go over the points and indicate which of those points could be relevant for your research. And then based on the identified points, uh, think about them and write them into the design of your project and text of your application. This checklist is free and you can download it from Gumtree. I will link it in the description box. So let me give you some examples from the checklist. Uh, these are the questions that you can ask yourself at the research idea development phase. Can you think of a project where gender or sex is a key factor or plays a significant role? This means basically whether you can come up with an idea for a topic that is related to your current research where gender plays an important role. How can your research or project address and highlight the gender dimension in its potential application and outcomes. Here you can think about whether you can identify potential applications or outcomes of your projects uh, where gender will play an important role. And another question is, if your research involves human participants, here you absolutely need to discuss gender dimension. Have you identified how gender and sex is relevant to your research topic and how it may affect the findings and outcomes? So make sure also to think if you could focus on intersectional identities, such as not only by gender, but by additional categories uh, such as race uh, or sexuality. And this is particularly important if you are in social and medical research. So you can ask yourself, uh, have you considered how gender may intersect with other identities and social categories such as race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, disability, et cetera, et cetera. So um, next, uh, these are some questions that you could ask yourself at the data collection phase. Will you use quota sampling by gender when collecting primary data? If you're collecting data with human participants, it's likely that you need to do it. Have you designed survey or interview questions in a way that could help reveal gender differences? Think about uh, the outcomes that could be gender specific in your research and then add relevant questions to your questionnaires and interview items. Next, uh, have you thought about including gender sensitive language in your questionnaire or interview items to ensure inclusivity and respect for all genders. So make sure that your language is inclusive, both in your proposal, your questionnaire, and interview items, as well as in your ethics statement. At the result analysis uh, stage of primary and secondary data, you can think of the following questions. Does the research methodology include the analysis of gender or sex differences, particularly if human participants are involved? If your research includes human participants, it's highly likely that you need to include analysis by sex or gender. And in this case, you shouldn't just mention it uh, in the passing as one of the control variables in your study, but try and tie it to one of your project's objectives. And yes, that means that you probably need to think about how to make at least one of your project objectives gender sensitive. A gender or sex analysis mentioned in the relevant work packages. So this just relates to creating your work packages and mentioning uh, sex and gender analysis. Do the expected project outcomes and impacts consider potential differentiated effects by gender or sex? At the results analysis and the interpretation stage, you might need to think if there are varying impacts by gender. The following questions you can ask yourself about the dissemination stage of your research project. Will you include relevant findings on gender differences in your project output, such as publications, reports, media op-eds, uh, and blogs? Will you target institutions and organizations that focus on gender issues to disseminate your research results? If so, which organizations? These institutions can be as big as UN women or as small as local group of women entrepreneurs. 
Have you considered publishing a specific paper report that focuses on the gender-related findings of your research project? And if you do, you need to discuss it as one of the deliverables of the project. Finally, I have included a few links that you may find useful for additional information. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will try uh, to respond as soon as I can. And additionally, I plan to create more videos about the MSCA postdoctoral fellowship in the future. And for now, just take good care. <laughs>